Well, all right, everyone, I've had this Vision Pro for about a week now, and there's one feeling or like sentiment that I just can't seem to shake every time I use this thing, and it's that the iPad and the Vision Pro are in a very similar situation. Let me explain. I still remember very vividly the day that I got the 2018 iPad Pro because I opened the box and I was in absolute awe. And the reason I started a YouTube channel to begin with was because I saw the iPad Pro and I saw endless possibilities. Just this beautiful pane of glass that was extremely powerful and thin and sleek and just versatile. I, again, thought those possibilities were endless with this thing. And the same sentiment and feeling began to happen with this Vision Pro and it happened to be twice. First is when I went to the actual demo to go pick this thing up and I saw everything that it could do, right? Because in the demo, they kind of throw everything that's amazing, like the immersiveness, the eye tracking, the spatial awareness, all of that kind of magical technology, again, wowed me and left me in awe. And then again, when I opened my own Vision Pro out of the box, I looked at it and I was like, this piece of hardware is beautiful and there's, again, endless possibilities. And then as I started to use the Vision Pro more and more and I saw the UI elements and the applications and how everything moved and how you kind of interacted with these applications and the software, it just gave me the feeling of the iPad and it really made me think how the iPad and iPad OS really shaped over time what the Vision Pro and what Vision OS is currently. So in this video, I want to break down what the iPad Pro and kind of the trajectory of the iPad Pro tells us and what to expect with the Vision Pro in terms of you know, how to use it, where it fits, and what the possibilities are, both from a positive and a negative perspective. So let me get into this. So let me first start with the hardware, and I'm gonna be mostly referring to the 2018 iPad Pro and newer, because that's kind of when they reshaped everything and Apple really put their best design foot forward and their versatility foot forward with the iPad. So with the actual hardware itself, it's very similar, right? We saw the iPad in 2018, it was unbelievable, right? It was super thin, it was beautifully machined, the combination of aluminum and glass, you know, it was an edge-to-edge -edge display. It was one of the first products that had a fully symmetrical bezel all the way around that was still extremely thin and easy to hold. So the hardware alone was a very big wow factor of the iPad, right? It had the great camera in 2018 even still. It had Face ID, which was the first time it was introduced in an iPad. So it was just a very big wow product from a hardware perspective. And I've even touched on the internal hardware, which we're going to touch on in a little bit. And the same thing is happening with the Vision Pro. It is impeccable hardware, like the glass, the metal, the material choice, how everything attaches via magnets, because it, again, Apple's been working on magnets in their hardware products since the iPad Pro. And again, it came to the AirPods Max and things like that. So it seemed like Apple used the iPad Pro as a canvas of showing off and showing off their design power in terms of how can we show off everything that we can do from a design standpoint and kind of show that we're kind of putting our best foot forward and we're ahead of the game from a market standpoint. And they're doing the same thing with the Vision Pro with the way that they machine this thing. And there's a reason why it's $3,500 because it's made out of this beautiful glass, how it's shaped with the aluminum that's in there. And that's not even talking about the strap itself. Even the strap itself and the material choices and how you tighten it with that knob is so seamless and everything just feels very organic in the way it's done. And everything also feels extremely high quality with the Vision Pro. And you might be thinking in the comments, yes, for a $4,000 product, it better be impeccable and it better be a great piece of hardware. And Apple really does put their best foot forward with this one and shows off exactly what they can do from a hardware prowess. And then the next similarity you see between these two products is just the absolute raw power that you get out of the iPad as well as the Vision Pro. Again, Apple is putting their best foot forward and showing exactly how much computational power is in the Vision Pro with these demos that they're showing. You have a bunch of different windows that are floating around that are able to kind of track exactly where you are from a spatial standpoint. So you can throw 10 windows and leave them in one room and then go to another room and have another five windows open that are kind of grounded in the exact same position that it was before. That takes a lot of computational power in order to get done. And again, from a memory standpoint, all these applications are exactly where you left them with the exact content that you left it in. You can have music playing in one room and then you kind of leave that room and then a spatial awareness from an audio perspective that they've also been working on with AirPods Pro for years. So Apple's kind of taking a bunch from all their different products. I still think that iPad Pro is kind of the main kind of muse that they were using in order to show off what the Vision Pro could be, but they're taking bits and pieces of technology from all of their products to kind of culminate into what the Vision Pro is. So the Vision Pro is a great example of what true raw power can be. And that's not even talking about the immersive nature of it, how spatially aware everything is when you are in those environments that we've been showing off for the past couple of days. And the iPad Pro had the same power sentiment with the A12X when it first released in 2018, that it was just like, 
wow, from a raw power standpoint, I'm over here exporting 4K footage faster than I would export it in my Intel-based Mac, and it was just absolutely mind-blowing, right? The amount of apps that you could have open and then go back to the multitasking and be back exactly where you were. The RAM management was great. Being able to use really intense tasks and have no problems with it, using the Apple Pencil as kind of another way of input with the iPad Pro. Again, all these similarities from a raw, power potential was absolutely amazing. And then it just kind of grew and grew and grew. And then eventually Apple took that A12X and that A12Z and created the M Power chip. And now that M Power chip is in all of our Mac devices because it is the most efficient way and the most powerful way to get true raw power. And now there's an M2 chip in the Vision Pro because Apple knows that that's the most efficient way to show off their power in terms of what they can do. So the spatial awareness, the spatial audio, the eye tracking that's capable on the Vision Pro, all great examples of true raw power that we haven't really seen before. So again, that other similarity is there of true raw power. And again, it wasn't overnight that Apple was able to kind of get all this spatial awareness and compute done for the Vision Pro. As you guys saw, Apple started adding LiDAR sensors first to the 20, I believe 2020 iPad Pro, and then they brought it to the iPhone 12 and 13. And now every iPhone has a LiDAR sensor, at least every newer iPhone. And for the most part, like I've never touched that LiDAR scanner or that LiDAR sensor because I haven't found the need to, but Apple obviously was using that to kind of help kind of space out everything. The same way that maybe Tesla uses all the road data and the driving data from all their millions of drivers and all the millions and billions of miles that those drivers have kind of driven kind of helps with their autopilot. It's kind of the same thing with the iPhones and the iPads and the LiDAR scanner. You know, millions of users have iPhones, there's millions of people using it, or maybe hundreds of thousands of people using it, and little by little, the more data that Apple collects, the better and more aware that they can be, and the more precise that they can be. So Apple's just using the iPad and the iPhones as vessels to then improve or finally create what the Vision Pro has, which is that a beautiful spatial awareness that basically feels magical at the end of the day. It literally feels like you're in a Harry Potter movie, or it almost feels like you're kind of Iron Man with Tony Stark when you have all these windows moving around that you can not only kind of throw around and look at it and kind of flick around, but you can also physically or physically interact with them by touching on each one of these applications and treating them as giant iPads, which is something that is just absolutely baffling. So again, if you have not had the opportunity to go to an Apple store and book a demo, I highly recommend that. It's worth driving an hour, maybe even an hour and a half if you kind of want to spend a Saturday out in an Apple store and maybe go to a mall because once you kind of see what the demo can do, then you realize like, wow, there's a lot of possibilities from a raw power standpoint, but we're going to touch on in a little bit that it's not all sunshine and rainbows. And then there are also similarities between these two products on the iPad Pro and the Vision Pro side, but kind of from a negative standpoint or from maybe a needs improvement standpoint. And the biggest sentiment that I've had as an iPad Pro user and, and as somebody who advocates for the iPad Pro being your main computer is that there's limitations to iPad OS, right? There's limitations to the software. Yes, the iPad Pro is a beautiful piece of hardware and it has all the raw power needed to kind of run Mac OS and a more productive software, but iPad OS really slows it down and that's the reason why I can't use the iPad as my computer, right? That's what a lot of people say when it comes to software limitations. And I'm getting that same kind of feeling with the Vision Pro. I made a video recently about the seven best use cases for the Vision Pro, and only one of them was a productivity feature. All the other six were all about content consumption and immersiveness and kind of being wowed about what it can do from a gaming perspective and things like that. But as of right now, there's only one real way to use this in a productive way, at least for the normal person that's kind of sitting at a desk all day and needs to be using a regular computer. So the same kind of sentiment was happening with the iPad Pro and continues to happen with the iPad Pro, which is, it's kind of in this limbo state of not a lot of people know how to use it for work. Not a lot of people find a real way to fit it into the workflow, right? They're, they already have their Mac. They already have their iPhone. Like, where does this iPad Pro, that's in now an $1,100, $1,200 piece of computer, where does that fit, right? If I want to have a content consumption machine, I'll just get a cheaper iPad or a throw around iPad that, like, my kids can use. Like, that's normally what the sentiment is. So... I do believe that there is a big similarity in that sense, right? After using this Vision Pro for a week, my biggest thing is where does this fit in my workflow, right? And for a $4,000 device, I don't wanna be asking that question. I wanna know what it's for. And yes, again, I keep saying that what it does is completely magical. And I understand from an R&D standpoint, probably how much it costs Apple to get this thing out to consumers. So that's where the price is going and that's why it's so expensive, as well as how well it's built and things like that. But the biggest cost for them is going to be R&D because it is amazing what it can do. But at the end of the day, where does it fit, right? Where can I fit this $4,000 computer in my workflow where, where I already have my MacBook Air doing what I need to do. I already have my iPad Pro doing what it needs to do. And I have my iPhone doing the rest of kind of all the rest of the things that I needed to do. So the Vision Pro not having a clear purpose or a clear direction as to where it goes. 
Apple did say that it's gonna fully replace your computer, but as of right now, it's still pretty far away from that for most people. I can definitely see some use cases where maybe the Vision Pro could be your only computer, but they're very, very small and in between, and that's something that was happening a lot with the iPad Pro. Up until recently, I have noticed more and more people have been using the iPad Pro as their main computer. So at the end of the day, this is a brand new product category that Apple's getting into. When the iPad first came out, I believe it was 2010 or 2011, at first, Steve Jobs just kind of came on stage and showed this pane of glass for you to check your email, for you to read an ebook, for you to kind of surf the web and kind of just have a bigger canvas to play with versus your iPhone. That was pretty much the only use case. He kind of put it and he told us exactly where it fit. It fit between your iPhone and your Mac computer for some tasks that maybe you want a bigger screen than your iPhone, but you don't want to get on your desk and use your Mac OS computer. So at least Steve Jobs gave us a direction as to where it fit, right? Right now with the Vision Pro, there is no nobody's telling us where it fits, right? It's kind of just like, look what we can do, look what we created, and look how awesome it is. And kudos to Apple. They made a crazy piece of technology that makes you feel, again, like it's magical, and it kind of brings some excitement back into this innovation standpoint, right? Because a lot of people said Apple stopped innovating, they're kind of just regurgitating the same products over and over again, which, to an extent, it's true. But again, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And like change for the sake of change for me is usually a negative thing. So the Vision Pro does show that Apple can still innovate and Apple still can kind of wow us and wow the whole world. I mean, you, everybody has seen the memes and the videos going around social media of what the Vision Pro can do. But right now, there's no real direction for it. Where does it fit? Like, I want my $4,000 computer to be able to get work done. Right now, the only thing I can do is kind of have a secondary monitor. And outside of that, it's just kind of tough for me to do it. And I'm not even talking about what it means to have, you know, the goggles on your face in terms of like a moral standpoint and a social standpoint and being kind of like blocked away from everybody else. That's a completely different aspect of this whole VR, AR environment that definitely needs to be talked about because that is probably the number one reason why I wouldn't use this as a main computer aside from the software limitations. But overall, we just need a little bit more direction out of the Vision Pro. The iPad Pro has finally found its footing a little bit, at least for the most part. There's different versions of the iPad for each person in each use case. For me, the iPad Pro is my computer for others the iPad mini is their digital notepad that they take in their purse or their backpack. You know, the iPad 9 and 10th generation is for students and for kids and for parents that want to give their kids an iPad at the dinner table and things like that. So there's reason and purpose and use cases for the iPads in that entire lineup. The Vision Pro, aside from being a wow factor piece of technology, I'm still kind of missing exactly what it can be used for on a day-to-day -day basis, right? I know there's niche situations and niche use cases where this is going to be amazing, but for the average consumer, it's still yet to be seen. So that was just about do it for this video, everybody. I just kind of wanted to give everybody an idea of where my mind is at with the Vision Pro and how it relates so much to the iPad Pro and those early kind of growing pains where it's like, whoa, this thing is so powerful. It can do so much. It's a beautiful piece of hardware. And that's exactly how I feel about the Vision Pro. It's like the, the canvas is pretty much endless and the possibilities are endless. But again, there aren't that many applications that are built for Vision OS. It still lacks a purpose in terms of most people's workflows. Where does it fit in your workflow? Is $4,000 too much just to have pretty much a toy, which I believe it is. Like I've never bought myself something for $4,000 just to have as like a toy, right? You have your Xbox that I bought for like three or 400. I have like a Game Boy that I bought for 200, but for $4,000, it's a tough sell just to have an extended monitor and then to be able to kind of show off exactly what it can do. Outside of that, right now, there isn't really a true purpose in my opinion, but leave some comments down below if you disagree. If you think you see the direction, if you are a full believer, let me know. I'm very curious to know and I'm very open to have discussions. I just wanted to share my two cents on how I feel about the Vision Pro. But if you made it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below, everybody, so I know that you made it to the end. And if you guys want to watch some more Vision OS, iPad OS, Mac OS, iOS, Watch OS videos, click on one of these right here. But definitely let's discuss in the comments and we're going to continue to test this thing and see exactly what we can do with it from a actual productivity standpoint and see if we can finally find a spot for it in our workflow. But that will do it, everybody. I'm Fernando and I'll see you later. Peace.